it's draft season. Yes, it might be the month of July, but it's still draft season. I mentioned this earlier in the week. We're going to start an Ohio State Buckeye draft, looking at some of the amazing players the Buckeyes have had in Columbus over the past 20 years. Here with us today is Jeff Hunt from the Off the Ball Network. Jeff and I are here to draft the best Ohio State quarterbacks of the last 20 years. I have my notes. Jeff has his. We have not shared him, and I shared them, and I cannot wait to see where Jeff and I draft these quarterbacks in this Buckeye draft right here only on Locked on Buckeyes. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes for the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Friday, July 8th in the year 2022, and today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. You heard it early. I talked about it earlier in the week. My guy, Jeff Hunt from the Off the Ball Network is here. He's back with us once again. And Jeff, I am glad you are here with us to not only kick off a special lead up to the season, but also to talk about some of the amazing players Ohio State has compiled at the quarterback position over the past 20 years. Dude, it's been amazing. The, the first of all, when I was coming up with my list of, of my draft prospects, I realized I know that there's a negative connotation of a high state quarterbacks going to the NFL. I don't care about that. Me, you, we're high state fans. Your listeners are high state fans. What we realize is how spoiled we have been with quarterback position over the last two decades. I had to pinch myself and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, I, Kenny Guyton is an afterthought, <laughs> and, and, and he's one of the, you know, he had one of the most biggest impacts of any Buckeye quarterback. So it was a lot of fun. I'm glad you asked me on to do this, and it's it is my pleasure. Jeff, one of the things that came into my list, and I have a yes list and a no section. There's a race component. The yes has a lot of one color. The no has a lot hey, of I'm one color. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. <laughs> That's literally the first thing that popped into my mind. I was like, wait, so Ohio State hey, gets knocked for the quarterback play. Well, there's a lot of one color under the no section on my mm -hmm. list, a lot of one color under the yes. I'm going to get away from that. You guys can go ahead and laugh or call Jay crazy. But when you look at your list and you make yours, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. But the draft is big, but conference realignment is huge as well. This should come as no surprise to anybody that's been a – around college football for any length of time. If you have not, literally go back into the early 90s or back-to-back code national champions. The next thing you know, there was, I think, the Bowl Coalition for three years, the Bowl Alliance for three years, and look and see what schools went from being FBS independent schools to joining conferences. You will see every time there's a change in how somebody formulates a way to create a national champion in college football, there's going to be conference realignment and it's going to blow your mind. That's all I'm going to say about this. Jeff, I think you were gone when the news dropped about USC and UCLA in regards to joining the Big Ten. But just conversation alignment as a whole, what are some thoughts you have about it? It's crazy, man. And that's why I told everybody that, you know, I had that the texts were pouring in. I was, I was out camping. I was out in the middle of the woods, but I could still, I could still get some, you know, uh, uh, correspondence here and there. And, you know, I first get that and I'm, you know, I'm the, you know, I'm one of the go-to guys as far as people I know. And they asked me like, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, what is going, what are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? USC, UCLA, the big 10. Cause you know, I grew up on a time to where, you know, pack pack 10, versus Big Ten really, really mattered. And I know that's a long time ago. But then I also said, well, I've been saying this for three or four years on my, you know, my podcast. You go back to any of my college football shows. I knew that, you know, we were always pushing towards the point of super conferences. It was bound to happen. You look at where the money is. You look at where, you know, you look at the eyeballs on TV. It, it was just going to happen. If you, if you just look at the most watched games every year, like Ohio State's always up there. Um, you know, Alabama's always up there. Uh, you know, some of the West Coast teams are up there. They're, we're going to find a way to try and concentrate this. And then, you know, I told you pre-show, again, we don't, we don't discuss much of this until we have a conversation pre-show. 
I think they also use, I think the, the powers that be also use the NIL as a scapegoat to, to get a lot of this done. So as soon as all of this came together at once, and as soon as Oklahoma and Texas said, all right, we're going to the SEC, it was no holds barred. Um, it, it's, I, I agree with every other sport that says this, you know, college football is running, you know, running rough shot right now, trying to figure it out. I'm not surprised this is happening. I agree with you. You you can't stop this. We can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Um, I, I don't I don't think that conferences are gonna matter soon is what I is what I'm getting at. I, I don't see there's a world to where I'm like, oh I can't wait for the Ohio State USC rivalry. I don't think it's gonna be like that. I think it's gonna be I've seen this happen in high school football. I think there's going to be huge, huge, you know, conferences slash divisions. They're going to be divided up. They're not going to play each other every year. Like I see Ohio State probably playing USC every once every four years, you know, something like that. It was going to happen. And I think we're about five years away from at most 64 teams mattering in college football. 64. That includes the Notre Dame fighting Irish. There have been talks yes, about absolutely. them potentially joining the Big Ten, saying the Big Ten is only going to try to add that school and forget everybody else, which to me, if you want to go for a brand, the biggest brand, one of the bigger brands in the sport, it is the Notre Dame fighting Irish. Oh, for sure. People have different thoughts about them. Notre Dame's trash. Notre Dame sucks. They're still the only school that has, literally the only school that has a network television deal mm -hmm. going back to the early to mid-90s. And so whatever you want to say, they have NBC – Ohio State has a deal with Fox, but it's not Ohio State. It's the Big Ten has a deal with Fox, which includes the Ohio State Buckeyes, which also includes Ohio State playing on ESPN. Notre Dame is still one of the bigger brands in the sport. Last question hit Jeff Foy here on conference realignment. Should the Big Ten – no, excuse me. Should Notre Dame join the Big Ten? Let's put it that way. The only reason I say no is because I don't think they should have to. This is one of the few things that I'm on Notre Dame side. I'm not a Notre Dame fan or any of that, but I get that the clout that they build up, they are one of the they are one of the reasons their tradition that we that college football is what we love. Um, I don't I don't I I don't want them to be forced into it just because that's the only option they have to get to a championship. Um, I, I I honestly see because I predict four huge conferences or 16-team conferences, I predict that Notre Dame will be in whatever, I don't know what we're going to call it, but let's like some form of the ACC with Clemson and Florida State and all these guys. I predict them being down there. So that way they're still kind of separated like they are now. And then you still have these big games scheduled like once every four years, you know, you play Alabama. Once every four years you play Ohio State, something like that. So I do not think that Notre Dame, I still don't think that Notre Dame will be in the Big Ten ever. I'll stand by that. We are here with Jeff Hunt from the Off the Ball Network. This is Locked on Buckeyes. Jeff, I think Notre Dame should stand put as well. They should not move, stay in independent. Um, I, I just don't see – like, I don't see a reason why they should. Now, they might get pushed to – or maybe a new president or new AD might say, forget tradition, forget what's happened, forget what Notre Dame is, forget the national brand, literally, that Notre Dame is. How about we just go ahead and join a conference – Okay, great. That takes one thing that makes Notre Dame special away from Notre Dame. Whatever. Like, you can have three schools in Indiana being the Big Ten of whatever conference. I really don't care. I just think, Jeff, that they should go ahead and stay where they are. We have to move on because, Jeff, and I, you and I talk a lot. So we cannot stay on this topic very <laughs> Real long. quick, shout out to Indiana. Might be a football power soon. <laughs> and let's remember, too, my last thought on it. Notre yeah, Dame yeah. is 50% in the conference now. They're not completely independent. So that's that's all. Gonna, that's the last thing I'll say about it. That is true. That is very true. So this draft, drafting the best Ohio State quarterback of the past twenty years. This goes back to the two thousand two season, which is also this is also going to be the twentieth season since they won the Natty. So we might do some special shows for that at the end of July, early August, um, just leading up to um, kind of celebrating that special year that Jim Trussell led the Buckeyes to upset the Miami Hurricanes in the. 2002 oh, 03 Fiesta Bowl, oh, 03 Fiesta Bowl. But this draft, Jeff gets first pick. He's the guest. There are going to be three rounds. It's a snake draft. So Jeff will go first. I'll go second pick. And then for the second round, it'll be me and then Jeff. And then for the third round, Jeff once again and then myself. At the very end, we will both have the option to say who our next pick would be. 
That is the only time we are able to pick the same player. Jeff, the floor is yours. Who is your first pick in the Ohio State Buckeye draft when we're picking the best quarterback of the past 20 years? So real quick, I just want to say my criteria was I took – in my mind, I took the best Ohio State teams out of the last 20 years, and then I thought which quarterbacks would be the most interchangeable, like which quarterback could succeed in 02 championship, 14 championship, the, you know, the 20 runner-up, so on so forth. And surprisingly, I came up with my number one pick, Justin Fields. <laughs> I, I could not believe it, but I think – I think in 02, he's probably the most unstoppable player on the planet because of like how football was different. Like if you're going to tell me Ken Dorsey was the best player in college football, Justin Fields runs him off the map. And Justin, you know, but he had a great career at Ohio State. Um, all things considered, he's a guy that like when the chips were down, if he just had to like run the ball and 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 get dirty and figure out what he had to do, but he also he also could dissect the defense like he did against Clemson in that, you know, playoff game. So I actually, my number one pick was Justin Fields. And a lot of people that hear this, that know me are going to be shocked. Justin Fields is one of those quarterbacks. You and I both ripped a lot, a oh, lot yeah. during the 2020 season after 2019 and the phenomenal season he had the way the Buckeyes played 2020 was a different story. And I, that was the first time I was covering the Buckeyes here on this podcast. I had Jeff one, I had different guests on and I was like, I'm a new guy around here. Should I really rip this guy for the way he's playing? Absolutely, because I would not be authentically myself if I did not do so. So Jeff going number one in the draft with Justin Fields. That leads me to my number two pick in this draft. And I'm going to just be honest with you. This one was a little bit interesting because I was really, really wanting to go to a guy who won the Heisman Trophy a dual threat that played before this current quarterback. Mm. Even I was thinking the guy that's currently at Ohio State right now. But number two, Dwayne Haskins. He's oh. unfortunately no longer here with us. Um, I think that 2018 season, people say that propelled Ryan Day to be the coach that he is now. I think not so much the coach, but I think that's what gave Urban Meyer the confidence to step away and due to the health reasons and know he had a guy on the staff currently that was capable of riding the ship, of leading the ship, and leading the Buckeyes to great things at Urban Meyer as he left. Now, Urban was probably going to leave due to health reasons or whatever, whatever was going on in his life. But I don't think Urban would have been firmly confident in who the replacement was going to be if Ryan Day did not only did the phenomenal things of the offense in 2018 – but Ryan Day was the acting head coach the first three games of the year. Yes. Went on the road down south to TCU. I think that, may, that game may have been in Dallas. I forget where they played that game. Oh, it was in I was there. It was in it was in yeah, it was in Arlington. I was there. And the Buckeyes came out, even losing a player, Nick Bosa, still found a way to win those first three games, had the flop against Purdue. But you can't deny what Dwayne Haskins was or has been to this team. Jeff, I'm gonna go ahead and pick my next pick. Nice. And um this one is a little bit easier than I expected it to be. Um, it, it It's simply because the guy who's um, right behind him on my board, I'm not, I have mixed feelings about. So next up, I'm going to go with CJ Stroud. I rarely, rarely, Ooh. rarely go with the quarterback who is still playing and saying that Stroud is that guy or the quarterback or the player that I'm picking is worthy to be in this conversation. Now, when we do the running back draft, will I pick Trayvon Henderson this high? That's to be determined for numerous reasons. But I not do a think. <laughs> What's that? No, I was going to say, if I get first pick in the running back draft, I can tell you who that is. <laughs> say that for another day. But I have to go see CJ Stroud with this one, man. Um, his ability to really get better, really get better really quickly, and his ability to really understand what Ryan Day wants, knows how to utilize his team, and as we are going to have Ryan Roberts on the t on the show here very, very soon, Ryan recently had a, a tweet that said Ohio State's offensive line was not good last year. Um, him and I kind of echoed those kind of statements. But Stroud really didn't let the offensive line play, and guys playing out of position really derail him and being successful this year or this past year. I think he'll be a whole lot better this year because the O-line will be better this year. Um, I got Haskins and then Stroud. Jeff, you're up. You can make any comments about what I said as well. No, it's great. The, uh, the only reason both these guys were a little farther down my list is because of my criteria. Um, I, I just haven't seen them play enough. Haskins had 
the, the, he like he didn't have any bad games that season. It was purely amazing. Um, you know, the only knock is that he went to the NFL after that. Stroud has only played one year. I right. think in two years, if you ask me, or another year, if you ask me, I'm like, yeah, Stroud is right there. Um, that's the only reason. I just I haven't seen him as as battle tested, you yes. know, as as under the pressure. But there's no there's no wrong answers here, and I'm very happy because I get my top two guys. Uh, my number two pick is Troy Smith. Uh, See, I was really weird about it, this one because I did, I did not know where to place him among the guys we have seen lately. I am, it, prisoner it, of the it, moment. I understand that, but no, it, man, and, he was, and he was right. good. And you're right, but what I think is. Imagine like imagine the success, you know, if you want to compare him to a guy, imagine the success that like Baker Mayfield had at Oklahoma or or Murray, Kyler Murray. You know, that you know, that's Troy Smith's skill set. But yet he he played in a day to where you you still got knocked around a lot. You didn't the offenses weren't and but he could he could come out he could run five wide offense or he could run he could also run a pro style offense he was just tough as nails you know he he didn't back down he was such a leader i mean his skill set was off the charts yeah. you know his quick throwing motion his recognition the way his team reacted to him he he is just a guy that he was a little undersized and ahead I mean, we're talking at that point. I know it's been passed since, but at that point, he was he had the highest percentage of first place Heisman votes in history. Like everybody, like recognized it. I remember the '05 season. He was actually one of the best quarterbacks in the '05 season. He had some, you know, self induced troubles with he took you know like five hundred dollars back then, which I know now all seems comical. That five hundred dollars probably cost Ohio State a shot at the national championship. In yeah, 05. when you got guys that are committing to Miami getting nine and a half billion dollar yeah. NIL deals and the kid yeah. turned down a deal from Florida for yeah. 11 million. Yeah. 500 dollars seems like a he's stupid now. And really that, and he he actually outplayed Vince Young in a game for when he was in the game. Go back and look at it. But uh Troy Smith is just he's just one of those dudes. You know, he comes in as the as of the last scholarship, you know, coming in that year. He was actually on the O2 national championship team as a red shirt. You know, he uh, he fills in late in the year. Justin Zwick had some troubles. He he beats Michigan three times. Like you got to factor that in. He was just he just and and he signed my son's football jersey. So you know, if you just add it all up, I really think I really really honestly think that Troy Smith, you know, there there's a there's a world or maybe a decade later to where he gets an actual shot at being an NFL quarterback. He was a, a truly great athlete, a truly great player. So I'm I'm happy to have I'm happy to have him as him as my backup. We are here with Jeff Hunt from the Off the Bud Network. This is Locked on Buckeyes. We are in the middle of our Buckeye draft where we're drafting the best Ohio State quarterbacks of the past 20 years. First pick went to Jeff. He got Justin Fields. Second pick was me. I, I picked Dwayne Haskins. Uh, first pick of the second round was myself. I picked C.J. Stroud. I got a little, maybe prisoner of the moment, but I still picked Stroud there. I'm going to ride with that one. And then Jeff took, took a guy with the second pick in the second round with Troy Smith, which I loved as a kid. Still love him now. Still think he's crazily under, crazy underrated mm. based off of how he was during that time period of college. I mean, think about it. You got Vince Young, Matt Leiner. Brady Quinn at this time is still one of the better quarterbacks yes. in the country. And Troy Smith wins the wins the Heisman, mm -hmm. and really, if it wasn't for Florida speed, really could have had a shot. No physicality yeah. and speed of Florida really could have won the national championship after coming off on the heels of playing in the game of the century, one versus two, Ohio State yep. versus Michigan, 42 versus 39, 42, 42, 39. So Troy Smith is one of those that I do think if you take back and go back and look at some of those clips, you might be like, why is this film so grainy? Why are they move? Why are the shoulder pads so big? <laughs> Why are they moving like that? Is that grass on Ohio, in Ohio Stadium? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't like he played in the 50s. He played it in like 05, 06, that, those time periods. Yeah. But we have one more round left. Jeff Hunt is up. Jeff, who you got, man? So, first of all, I also want to say, too, that like uh, Troy Smith played in the day to where like people still ran the football. It, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. Um, my, and I'm happy to have this. My number three pick, I couldn't be happier right now. Or my, I guess my, yeah, my third pick, uh, JT Barrett, the, the, the undisputed greatest player basically in Ohio State history. I understand that there, there may be a, some that accomplished more, some that did more. JT Barrett, 
uh, came into an impossible spot when Braxton Miller goes down in a shoulder injury, guides us to a national championship. You know, that that's where things get iffy. Um, comes back the next year, gets his job back, comes back the next year, plays great, goes to the playoffs, come back, comes back the next year, you know, wins, wins a huge bowl game. He just – he sets all the Big Ten records wise there. He never had the, you know, athleticism or the the overall arm talent that like some of these guys do now. Like we talk about Haskins or we talk about uh, Justin Fields. But Barrett was just I've never heard a teammate, you know, say anything other than he was a great leader. They would follow him anywhere. You know, he was there for five years. Uh, he played through injury, played through a lot of pain. He had some of the greatest wins in Ohio State history, like the Penn State one sticks out in your mind. And he, you know, he, for a freshman to guide a team, that 2014 team, to where they went. And then, you know, the story, you know, goes on from there. Uh, JT Barrett, and, and that's a guy that I think if you put him in now, he gets hit less and probably has bigger stats. If you put him in 2002, I think he's a better version of Craig Krenzel. Like, I think that he puts his head down and is one of the best athletes on the field. So this is a guy that I think could have played for all 20, all 20 years of the decades we're talking about. So I'm, I'm happy to take uh, JT Barrett. Jeff and I are so alike because that was going to be my next pick. <laughs> I knew it was. But, <laughs> when you soon as you said snake draft, I knew who it was going to I knew who number three was going to be. <laughs> but I have no other choice than to take one guy. He was coached by Jim Trestle, I believe. No, he was not coached by Jim Trestle. I believe 2011. Was that the first? Was that the Luke Fickle year? Yep. So it was a Fickle year in 2011. He was on the team from 2011. Through 2015, he unfortunately got hurt in a year when the Ohio State was going to win the what ended up winning the national championship. JT Barrett came in, he ended up getting hurt, and Cardell Jones had a phenomenal three game run. I am going with Mr. Braxton Miller. Now, I did not say this up front, but the guys had to play quarterback at least one time during their season, during their career. And you could have said, well, Jay, well, there were some other guys that made some phenomenal throws and. Braxton Miller played receiver, so could he be a next in the receiver draft? He could be. He could be in multiple drafts because he did play multiple positions, but he was a quarterback. And I do think that the way he played quarterback, and I just went through the stats really quickly. Um, I'm not going to throw up a lot of the stuff that's up here. But, Jeff, in back-to-back -back years, he threw for 2,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards in both years. 2012, um, he had 1,200 rushing yards. 2013, he had 1,000 rushing yards. And I'm sitting here looking at myself and wondering – why in the world did this man ever think to go from quarterback to receiver? Now, I understand coming off of the injury and coming off of the things that he went through. But while he was playing football, I recently went back and watched the TV show Friday Night Lights. And there was a time period in the TV show. You could literally see the transition and the evolve, evolving of football going from your regular pocket style, pro style quarterback, pocket, um, pocket passer, to your dual threat. And they brought in Michael B. Jordan in the TV show, and he was your dual Vince. threat guy. Yes. And then all of a sudden, it's like, well, that's really what happened in real life because as things went 08, 09, 2010, 2011, yep. co teams started putting their literally their best athlete and said, well, you might not be able to throw the ball the best, but you can move the ball with your feet and go out there and win the games for us. That's what Braxton Miller did. And I didn't think at the time when Terrell Pry was in school, if he would be a guy to come in as a, as a dual threat, and he better than Terrell Pryor. Terrell Pryor was, was, a, was a phenomenal quarterback. But I just thought, okay, cool. Like, this is Ohio State. They're going to get this now. Then go back to their old ways of getting your more regular court. No. Ohio State got a guy better than Terrell Pryor and Braxton Miller. And Braxton Miller was really – if he didn't get hurt, he, he probably would have been in the running for the Heisman during that 20, oh, yeah. what, 2014 season. So Braxton Miller is my guy. My last pick, I ended up going with – Dwayne Haskins, C.J. Stroud, Braxton Miller in this draft. Jeff Hunt went with Justin Fields, Troy Smith, and J.T. Barrett. What say you? Who picked the best team? <laughs> because I know it's going to be tough. It's going to be very, very tough. All these guys are talented, and I'm going to say something I said at the beginning of the show. Say it once again. My no list is not all full of one color. But there's a lot of one color on my no list. Yeah. My yes list has all of one color on there. Jeff, man, this was fun. Who would have been your next pick in this draft? 
my next pick, my number six overall was uh, Terrell Pryor. And the, the reason was, you know, you know, obviously there's a little bit of a stigmatism. And, and some of it is because I think that if he doesn't leave school, that that 2011 season, I, I, th- I think he's, I think we have, we have a national championship contender. He was getting better. He really was learning how to play quarterback under Jim Trestle. Um, it, it just, I, I saw him do some amazing things. And as an athlete, he really bothered the other team. Like he yes. was a, if he gets to play his, his next year, he's a better threat than Vince Young. And I know people think that's crazy, but as far as like the arm, the speed, the size, he was a, a little bigger, better version than Vince Young was. I'll never, re- you know, it always bothers me that we didn't get to see that again because of the tattoo gate or whatever. Um, he, 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 he seemed like a, you know, a decent kid at the time. Um, I, I don't know. I know things wound up weird, but he never really did anything negative at Ohio State. We loved him. Uh, I just, I, I really just think he's a guy and still on the field. If you give me a six, six quarterback that can do what he did, Ryan day can figure it out. And I still think he, he can win you some games. So um, I had Miller just under prior. What I want to say about Braxton Miller real quick. He was thrown into an impossible situation his mm-hmm. freshman year. That kid was not meant to be a starting quarterback his freshman year of college. He Coming out of high school, he was not prepared for that. He was a kid in high school down in um, – he played down at Wayne. He carried that team on his back. He th- That was not supposed to be him. He was thrown into that. Him and Luke Fickle both made the best of that season, and Miller fought through that season like a champ. And I will always, always, always remember that – is one of the greatest seasons in Ohio State history because of they they it could have been a complete collapse. I know what you I know what the record looks like, but I watched the games and the way he fought through it and grew as a player and then of course went undefeated, you know, for the next I think 20 some games until that horrible Michigan State decision which I still put on Urban Meyer. It is what it is, but uh Braxton Miller is a near and dear to my heart, but I think I think prior as a quarterback I have him just ahead. I'm right there with you. Um, if I would have gone for a feel good story, it would have been Kenny Guyton because I do think he. Oh was, my goodness, he was a guy that if you put him on, I mean, there were times when Braxton Miller was on the field. I love Braxton Miller. Don't get me wrong. Situationally, Kenny Guyton was a better quarterback. Yeah, and I will go down and I will always oh, say that. Oh, yeah, always say that. There's a reason why Kenny Guyton is, a, is. I believe he's coaching now. Coaching somewhere is a yeah. He's coaching coacher. somewhere. I don't know why I kind of lost track of him, but he's out. He's out there coaching. He's one of those guys where you knew. Probably wouldn't be a guy that's in the NFL. He would probably be a guy that goes like arena league or one of these smaller football leagues at the time and then find his way into coaching. It's what he's doing now. But Terrell Pryor, I do think um, I'd kind of handed out kind of the evolving of uh, evolvement of uh, or evolving of football and the philosophies that happened with offensive coordinators and how they called plays and who they wanted to play quarterback. Terrell Pryor being an athlete was one thing that really allowed him to be successful. He could make throws. He could use his body. I mean, you said it already, six foot six. And you were talking about a guy that's a dual threat in multiple ways. I literally just rewatched in pieces, not consistently, but rewatched the Fiesta Bowl, Ohio State and Texas. Oh, there were two oh. point plays where Ohio State put Terrell Pryor out of receiver. And wide receiver. Todd Beckman at quarterback. Um, one two point play was a fade route. Terrell Pryor got it. The other one, pass interference, he literally blatantly pushed the, the corner. Who it, The corner initiated the contact. The next thing you know, Terrell Pryor says, get off me. The two-hand shoves him. That's <laughs> right there, uh, pass interference. But I do think Terrell Pryor, in the time period that he was there at Ohio State, in between Braxton Miller and – well, right there between – basically between Braxton Miller and um, um, Troy Smith, you kind of had this guy here was who was different, a little bigger, a little taller, um, different type of guy. And for – Jim Trestle to realize how to utilize this quarterback and to still be successful yep. and still be as dominant as Trestle was as Ohio State's coach. It's it's a phenomenal thing to think about. I mean, and I Pryor, always, yeah, Pryor always lost, Pryor. yeah, Pryor lost like what two or three games. Like it had a, they, they were very good while he was there. And I was giving credit, especially for that Texas game, because he could have wanted to be the the guy and he could have wanted to be the guy on TV. No, they're like, no, Beckman's gonna start like you know, it, it's so long ago that it's hard to remember, but that stuff was a big deal. Um, you know, Beckman coming off a, you know, national championship run, uh, so to speak, you know, against LSU. 
But, um, you know, Pryor, Pryor took the job and then he gave it back and he took it back. And he, he really was a, a much better team player than I think anybody will ever remember. Well, you mentioned Ken Dorsey earlier in the show. We're going to close it up with this. People marvel at how many losses Ken Dorsey had during his Miami career and say he was he was a, the ultimate winner. I mean, he was a guy you want you want on your team. Ken Dorsey was litter. His team was full of first round NFL draft picks. Oh, yeah. Like I don't mean to get like like upset or a little annoyed. The team literally had first round offensive linemen. I mean, the NFL draft picks that. What do you have? Clinton, um, Clinton Portis, Wolf, Gay, he Edron, oh. I think he had Edron James too. Mm -hmm. Like you, you have all you have Jared Payton. You get all these really good now. Payton got to the NFL, I think because of his name, but he was still a good quarterback, I mean running back. But you had all these guys on offense. You go on D Andre Johnson, Reggie Wayne, you go to on oh. defense, Sean Taylor, it's Ed endless. Reed. Endless. You're having all these guys. And so I I think when it gets lost, what gets lost in the sauce is Ken Dorsey was littered with NFL talent on both sides of the ball. If he failed, it's literally his fault because all you got to do is throw the ball up in their area, in the area. Uh, Andre Johnson going to get the ball, or Reggie Wayne's going to get the ball, or Roscoe Parrish is going to catch the. Still one of my favorite slot receivers of the early two thousands. It's Roscoe Parrish. I mean, I just I love it. But then you have Terrell Pryor. As talented as Ohio State was, they didn't have that talent. They didn't have that. Well, they didn't I play loved, that way either. They didn't no, play that way. I love Daniel Boomheron as a running back. I love him as a as a player. Oh. He is nowhere near oh. being as talented as any of those guys oh, I just mentioned gosh, with no. Willis McGahee, Clayton Portis, anything like that. BD Wells, love him. Those other guys are NFL, are guys that if they don't get hurt, they have longer NFL careers. We, so I think sometimes we just got to stop and realize Terrell Pryor did not have that talent and still barely lost while quarterback at Ohio State. Yeah. We got to close up shop because Jeff and I could go on forever. <laughs> this draft was more fun than I, I just expected want to it to be. I, don't want, I want to apologize real quick to Craig Krenzel. You're my favorite, but <laughs> I can't. If you would have told me 20 years ago, Jay, you know, we talked about the anniversary that Krenzel would be eighth on my list. Uh, I would have, I would have not believed you. And I would have not believed that what, what a good 20 years it would have been for high state football. Man, it's crazy to think about. I mean, so on my no list, I had Cardell Jones. I wanted to put him on the yes list. He didn't play enough. Like you, like He just didn't I, play enough. I even gave C.J. Stroud the nod for playing only one year, and Haskins only playing for one year gave them on the on the yes side. You cannot be the guy. A great three-year run, three-game run, but in the follow-up season, you're not the clear-cut number one quarterback on the team regardless of what the stats say. I just can't put him there. Uh, Kenny Guyton, a feel-good story. Joe Bowserman, sorry. Uh, Todd Beckman, sorry. Justin Zwick, sorry. I'm not, I, I just can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Those are the guys I had on my list, Jeff. This was fun. Any last comments and about oh, before we leave about the quarterback specifically? I know you kind of said some, but any more? And then uh, let everyone know where they can follow you on Twitter and your shows as well. Well, I think the biggest thing that, that this is about is like, you know, shout out to like Bobby Hoyne, you know, and guys like that, you know, yes. back in the day. But I remember growing up as a kid, I remember watching all the other teams and your thought was like, why, like, why can't Ohio State, you know, hit that next gear? Why aren't we at that next level? And it was always the quarterback. And then I remember, you know, Krenzel comes in, he comes out of nowhere. Belisari gets a DUI. Krenzel beats Michigan. And from the moment Krenzel beat Michigan, the the story of quarterback at Ohio State changed, and whether it was Tressel, whether it was whether it was Meyer, whether it was Fickle, you know, you know, bringing Miller along, and then now whether it's Day, the 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 story has changed. And again, I we talked about each other. A lot of people say a lot like, "Oh, Ohio State quarterbacks in the NFL." I don't care if you look at Ohio State. If you look at just Ohio State quarterbacks and what they do, they're just unstoppable. They're ju they're just great. They're Heisman candidates. They're Player of the Year candidates. You know, their, their stats are off the charts. They win games. Like, it has been a great two decades of uh, quarterbacking in Ohio State. Yeah, I'm Jeff. You can find me at jhunt006 on Twitter. Check out Off the Ball Network for me and all my other guys doing all of our stuff. We're getting closer to football season. So, you know, the Buckeye remix is going to be firing up soon. Jeff Needs Sports is going to be, uh, you know, kicking up with some of the great content like this. And, again, I want to thank Jay and the Off the Ball Network uh, for having me on again to do such a entertaining and nostalgic list as this. Guys, you can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. This is fun, way more than I expected. 
This is only the first. I've already told Jeff, we plan on doing one for running backs, wide receivers, defensive linemen, linebackers, and DBs. I think what gets lost in the sauce is how many great D linemen Ohio State has had over the past 20 years. Literally, when I mentioned this to Jeff in a text, he mentioned one. I mentioned another one that I don't think he even thought about at that time. And so this is going to be a fun little exercise, a little Friday way for us to – fun way on a Friday to get out and have some fun and think a little bit about what Ohio State has been blessed with and kind of also celebrate what happened 20 years ago mm. as Ohio State won the national championship during the 2002 season. I'm out of here. It's a Friday show. Have a great weekend. I know we got a little rain here in Indiana. I think you guys did in Ohio – as well um enjoy the weather enjoy the rain because goodness gracious we desperately needed it and uh, have a good weekend guys i'm out of here just out of here i gotta stop talking enjoy the day